Welcome back to Understanding Python. My name is Jake, and today we'll be continuing to evolve our Pizza Builder script by rewriting the CLI to use the third party library, Click. Click is the library that I use both personally and professionally to write Python CLIs. I believe that after this video, you'll want to give it a try as well. As we go, if you learned something new, let me know by liking the video. Now let's get started. In our VS Code editor, I have our arg parts version of the Pizza Builder CLI on the right hand side. We can take some inspiration from that for our implementation using Click on the left hand side. Now, since Click is a third party library, we're going to want to create a virtual environment, activate the virtual environment, and then use pip to install Click into that environment. For more on virtual environments, you can watch the video that I did on the subject, which will be linked in the top right now. So first thing, we'll move into our click CLI folder and then create a new virtual environment and activate it. Okay, now that we are in our new virtual environment, we'll go ahead and pip install click. And we see that it is successfully installed. We'll go ahead and ignore the warnings about older pip versions like everyone else does. All right, and now that click is installed, we can import click. Let's go ahead and set our interpreter within VS Code, which be click CLI, and that suppresses the warning that we saw above. All right, so since this is building on top of what we did before, we can actually copy our sizes and crust from earlier. We don't need to recreate those manually. So now we have our small, medium, large, extra large and extra extra large sizes as well as our different kinds of crusts normal thin and deep now the next thing that we'll want to do is work on our build pizza method so let's copy what we did on the right as a starting point and see how this needs to evolve as we introduce click into the process so the neat thing about click as compared to arg parse is to build your cli you use decorators, meaning that instead of defining a parser and adding arguments to that parser and then calling, you know, explicit parse args and then passing in those parse arguments into something else, we can just use decorators to define our CLI directly on top of this method. And the first decorator we're going to use to do this is at click dot command. So we now have click.command, command being the decorator, wrapping our build pizza method. If you're unsure how decorators work, you should see a link pop up on the top right now. Please give that link a watch as decorators can be very confusing, but I think that video will certainly clarify them for you. Now, for those of you that have watched the video and remember how I broke decorators into four different types, this click.command decorator is what I call a type 4 decorator, meaning that it can accept different arguments and it will return a different function from what is decorating. So build pizza won't be the same build pizza as we saw before. We can actually see this in action. So I'll comment out this line, save it, and then we'll load this in IPython. Okay, now we have pizza builder. And we have our build pizza function. We see that as a function defined under main. And if we check the ID of build pizza, we see it has this ID. We'll just remember the last four, 2528. Now, if we were to wrap that in the click.command decorator, so we'll call this build2 is equal to click.command. Remember that you can also manually call decorators like this. Passing in build pizza, we now have build2, which is a different function. We see click.decorators.command, and so on and so forth. We can also check the ID of build2. We see that yes, indeed, these are actually two separate functions. So when we decorate build pizza with click.command, we are using a type 4 decorator that will be replacing build pizza with a click 
command. All right, back to the file. We'll touch more on that in just a few minutes. Now let's look into actually defining the CLI itself. On the right, we had an argument of size. How would we replicate this with Click? Well, Click lets us layer these decorators. So while we had Click.Command, we also have Click.Argument. And this is, as we'll see a little bit later, is a Type 3 decorator. So while it will decorate the function from before, it will just return a modified version of that function. Okay, and a lot like what we did on the right with arc parse, we can specify the name of this argument to be size. For the type, we're going to use some more click magic. And we'll say click.choice. And the choices that we're going to allow will be the keys of sizes. Just like we did before with arc parse. And helpfully enough, we'll also specify a default. And that default will be large. Awesome. So now we have a new argument defined. That argument being size, it'll give users an option between a single choice of any of the keys within sizes. So S, M, L, XL, and XXL. Now here's another area where click differs from arg parse. So you may be thinking at this point, where's size going to be stored? Or how are we going to access the value of size? Well, since click is decorating the function build pizza, we'll say that size is a positional argument for build pizza. And nicely enough, we can then reference size just like this in the function below. And then we can do the same exact thing for crusts at click.argument. We want that to be a crust. Type will be the same thing as before, click.choice, and that will be crusts.keys. And we can also specify a default of normal. And just like we did for size, we'll put crust as a positional argument, get rid of order dot, and now our line to build the initial string for pizza is a little bit simpler than what we saw in the augparse version. We just use size as the index for sizes and crust as the index for crusts, getting out those values. Let's pause where we're at right now and take a look at how these arguments are affecting build pizza. For demonstration purposes, we'll comment those out. Save, go back into the file. Okay, so we still have the original build pizza available. And the ID of that, last four, seven, nine, eight, four. Now, if we were to apply one of these arguments to build pizza, again, we'll call this build two, pass in build pizza. We now have build two. You can already tell that this is different from what we saw before with click.command. If we check the ID of build two, we can see that yes, indeed, these are the exact same functions. So click arguments differ from click commands, meaning that they are a type three decorator. So they accept arguments and they return a modified version of the same function. We can see that modification if we look under the new dunder attribute, click params. And we see the first position being argument size. And just taking a quick look at all the methods available for argument size, we can take a peek at just how much functionality Click makes available through the library. So through a pretty simple interface of decorators, we can build a really complex CLI. Okay, back to what we were doing before. I'll go ahead and restore those, and we'll move on to defining the rest of our CLI. The next thing that we wanted to do was toppings. Now toppings are different from size and crust. We want size and crust to be passed in as arguments to our script. But there's actually a different term for what we want to do with things like toppings, extra cheese, or extra sauce. And Click differentiates these as options. So much like we did with click.argument, we also have click.option. And options actually give us a little bit more functionality than what we had with arguments. 
So kind of like what we did before with toppings in odd parse, we can use much of the same notation for click. So dash T, as well as dash dash toppings. One being the short form and one being the long form. Now the type of these will be free form, so we'll just specify those as a string. Now another area where click differs from arg parse is the way that you would specify the number of arguments that you accept. Click is significantly more opinionated, and while you can specify the number of args, this is more explicit than what's available in arg parse, meaning that you can't just say plus. The authors of Click determined that having a variable number of arguments being passed into a single option is a bit less deterministic than what would be ideal. So we can either specify two for the number of args, but that means that if someone passes in one topping or three or more toppings, it's going to complain. The way to get around this is by using multiple equals true. Now this does change the call behavior, meaning that if we wanted to specify multiple toppings, we have to pass those individually. For example, dash T bacon and dash T onions. So this is a bit of a compromise in behavior. And finally, we can be a little bit lazy by just copying our help text from the right here. Perfect, we now have our first option done. Just like what we did with size and crust, we can specify toppings right here as another positional argument. Get rid of order.toppings, or just toppings, and we're continuing on our way. Let's add our options for extra cheese and extra sauce. These will be at click.options as well being extra cheese. And then we encounter another deviation from arg parse. So with arg parse, we wanted these to be treated as flags, meaning that if you pass that option, it'd be treated as the value true. And more specifically, it'd be stored in the destination variable cheese. Well, we can do this even more simply with click by instead of having to explicitly state a destination variable, we just say cheese. And then cheese becomes the destination. To give us our flag behavior, we say is flag is equal to true. Simple, right? And then again, because I'm lazy, we copy our help text. Add extra cheese to your pizza. Incredibly easy. Now, just like we did with size, crust, and toppings, we can now add cheese. Remember that we're storing it to the variable cheese in our positional arguments. Get rid of order dot cheese for just cheese. And then we'll modify that to give us sauce as well. Just replacing cheese for sauce. Now there's just a couple more things that we need to do before this script is ready. If you look on the right, we no longer have to parse our args. Since this is all built on top of our build pizza function, we don't explicitly have to call build pizza. As a matter of fact, we don't even have to print either. We can use another function within click. So instead of returning pizza, we'll simply say click dot echo. So what this will do is echo out to the command line. And then the final touch to make it all work is if name is equal to under main, simply call build pizza. All right, and without further ado, let's save and test it out. First, let's check our help text. Oh, and silly me, I made a simple mistake of not keeping my parentheses in order. Save it, clear, and try again. Perfect. So now we see usage pizza builder. It tells us we can specify options. It gives us the sizes of pizzas as well as the different types of crusts, followed by the options down below, all beautifully formatted. 
But there's one thing missing. In our art parse version, we had a nice little description saying, welcome to the pizza builder, let's build a pizza. We don't have that right now in this click version, but we can add that really easily. We can simply add that as a doc string. So if we save that, do help again, we get our nice doc string message. All right, let's try this out. So we should have defaults for most things. So let's give it a run without specifying anything. Okay. And we get a message saying that our pizza is large. Simple enough. We'll specify a different size. Now we have an extra large pizza. We'll add a type of crust. We have an extra large thin crust pizza now. Specify toppings. Go with my usual two toppings here. We see that we have an extra large thin crust with bacon and onions. We'll go ahead and throw on some extra cheese. And now we see plus extra cheese. Pop that off for extra sauce. And we also have extra sauce in there as well. Beautiful. And taking away any of these options should work until you start violating argument order. So here's that built-in handling that Click comes with. We specified thin, but technically the first argument for Pizza Builder is the size of a pizza. Regardless of if a default exists, if it thinks that you're trying to pass in something as a first positional argument, it's going to try to put that in as your first positional argument. So if we correct that by putting in small, it works again. Now we can get rid of that second argument just fine and go with just options without any issues. If we try to specify something different for the type of pizza, we'll get the same thing. Invalid value for normal, thin, or deep. Yes is not one of normal, thin, or deep. That's how those choices work. And if you throw on a little something extra at the end, like something, it will do the error handling for that as well. Well, that wraps up this video. Now that you understand how to use Click to generate a CLI, you can easily incorporate them in your own projects. What is your favorite trick with Click? Or was it something I showed today? Leave a comment down below to let me know. As always, today's code will be added to the understanding GitHub repo. So check the description for a link. And of course, if you have any questions or suggestions for topics you'd like me to cover, leave a comment for me. To keep up with the series, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching.